What is going on Jeff fans Matt O'Leary back with another video in today's video I have a few news stories to break down for you on this Monday in February it's a quiet time yesterday was the first Sunday without football in a really long time it hurt my soul it was not very fun but we are getting through this together. Don't worry, it's very soon it's gonna be free agency time, then the NFL draft. By the way, as you know, NFL draft, myself, Ryan and Greenbean are broadcasting live from the main event on Long Island in Farmingdale. If you wanna come join us, tickets, get your tickets, link down below in the description, QR code on the screen, all that fun stuff. We are really excited about it. And sorry that I'm talking about it a lot, but it is something that I that we're really excited to do. It's the, the biggest thing we do every year, the, the draft stream, and we wanted to do a big party and get everyone together. So it's, it's going to be a really good time. But again, today, three really big free agent nuggets from really, again, pretty much just all today and a little bit of yesterday. But we'll start with David Bakhtiari. So more than likely, the Green Bay Packers are going to release David Bakhtiari. Now, naturally, anyone who has spent 35 seconds with the Green Bay Packers or Aaron Rodgers in his career is going to get a link to the New York Jets. And I get it. David Bakhtiari and Aaron Rodgers are close. The Jets need help on the offensive line. I see where the connection is going to come from. I do not agree with this being a good plan for the New York Jets for a few reasons. And the main one is a, it's age and injury. I, I, I get it. When healthy, the pushback that you will always get if you are someone who is not a fan of the Jets signing David Bakhtiari, the, the pushback you're going to get is, oh, well, when he's on the field, he's, he's really good. Okay, but he isn't on the field very often. 12 games, 1, 11, and 1 over the last four years. So what does that tell you? He's probably not going to play a whole lot of games. The Jets also play at MetLife Stadium, where the turf is absolutely horrific. David Bakhtiari has said countless times that he does not want to play on turf. He sat out a game in Atlanta this year because of that, and he's taken shots at the MetLife Stadium turf before. It doesn't make sense. He's had five knee surgeries. And I get it's the same knee, it's the same injury. I've, I've seen people try to justify it. I'm not going to be sold on it. I'm really not. It is so incredibly risky for the Jets to go, I want to fix our injured offensive line by signing an often injured offensive line. I, I don't think we have to make it any harder than that. Like there are people, I, I think we're trying to overcomplicate it and spin zone it into whatever happening being a positive. And it, that's just not the case. It's not 2019 anymore, man. Like I understand two time all pro four time pro bowler when, when healthy, he's very, very good. I, I get it, but he's 33 years old with five knee surgeries. And maybe this is the one that will finally fix it. Maybe, maybe that's finally the time that it will fix it. I don't want to be the team that takes the risk and saying, maybe this time David Bakhtiari is fixed. It's like, I don't know, like, if let's make the comparison like a real life comparison. Your girlfriend is cheating on you and you're like, oh, this is it this time. She's got it out of her system. She's going to be fine. You know, when she doesn't cheat, we're really good together. But when she does cheat, it, it comes back to bite you. And your last three girlfriends cheated on you too. Like, it's just, I, oh man, this one drives me nuts. It really does. Jeff fans are so frustrating with this. They We just, for the last two years, saw this team have an offensive line that was so damn injured. And then everyone's just like, oh good, let's get our hands on the next often injured offensive lineman to come in here and try to fix this problem. I... Not for me. Sorry, guys. Just not for me. I'm not going to be able to get on this one. All right. How about Mike Tannenbaum? He has been on an absolute heater of the absolute worst possible decisions for the New York Jets and free agency. The most recent one on Get Up this morning on ESPN. He predicts L Russell Wilson's landing spot and he predicted the New York Jets. <sighs> oh, Mikey. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. I, I I, really was not a fan of the Brandon Cooks and C.J. Mosley trade. This one is also just not good. Russell Wilson, number one. Like, let's just focus on, we'll, we'll take this step by step. 
Russell Wilson, clearly not the same guy. He's going to get released. Is he a better backup than than most options out there? Yes. Is he going to sign somewhere where he would be definitely a backup and not have a chance to compete? I don't think so. I don't think that makes any sense. Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Vegas, those places seem like more realistic options for Russell Wilson to go, not to back up Aaron Rodgers. Then what kind an Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson quarterback room just seems like an absolute ticking time bomb. And then number two, Nathaniel Hackett's the offensive coordinator. Russell Wilson had his worst season as a pro with Nathaniel Hackett as his offensive coordinator. Why would he sign on to come here? To resurrect his career and to sit behind Aaron Rodgers? I I don't see it. I really don't. Let's not make this one super complicated. That is, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, Mike Tannenbaum. Doesn't make much sense. It just really does. Now, last but certainly not least... Apparently, Mike Evans is expected to hit the market, expected to test free agency. I don't know if I'm going to get to that point where I'm getting my hopes up for that. He feels like someone who's going to end up sticking in Tampa Bay. I know they haven't reached an agreement on that new contract yet. And today was kind of like a cutoff, not a cutoff date, but they had a an idea that they were trying to, at this point, you know, have the contract figured out. But if Mike Evans does hit the market, oh my goodness, one of the most consistent wide receivers in the NFL, 10 straight seasons of 1,000 plus yards, doesn't matter who his quarterback is, he is going to produce. He produced with Baker Mayfield, he produced with Tom Brady, he produced with Jameis Winston, all three quarterbacks, all three different skill sets, all three different talent levels, and he's been really, Really good, consistent clutch. The downside, 31 in August, that is usually about the time things begin to slow down for wide receivers, and is supposedly looking for around $25 million a year. He will definitely be more costly than someone like a Calvin Ridley in free agency who's been uh, talked about for the New York Jets for the last few weeks now. I would like Calvin Ridley. Mike Evans is significantly better. And if they can make that work money-wise, because that's going to be an issue with that price point. And number two, just the salary cap in, in general, although it is expected to go up pretty significantly in 2024, still fitting that under the cap is easier said than done. Mike Evans and Garrett Wilson, I think, would be an absolutely nasty duo. That would be a fantastic one-two punch at the wide receiver room. And with how bad... The Jets have been offensively over the last few years. They have to do everything in their power to make life as easy as humanly possible for Aaron Rodgers. Nathaniel Hackett is not a good play caller. We've seen it many, 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 many times. Aaron Rodgers is going to have to be calling plays and making changes and checks to the line of scrimmage. That much we know. But giving Aaron Rodgers every single thing possible for it to have success... It's a really good start. I mean, if your top four pass catchers next year are Garrett Wilson, Mike Evans, Brees Hall, Tyler Conklin, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And you add in maybe an elevated role for Jeremy Ruckert, add a wider, another wide receiver in the draft. You still have Alan Lazard who maybe bounces back. Fingers crossed he bounces back. Another veteran receiver or Xavier Gibson, Jason Brownlee taking a step. There's a path for them to have success on offense, and I would really look long and hard at trying to find a way to make the Mike Evans contract work. If they can make it work, if he does hit the market, which again, I am tempering my expectations on that, it would be really surprising to see him in another uniform outside Tampa Bay, but you never know. The NFL is weird. Sometimes weird and unexpected things happen. So let me know your thoughts on Bakhtiari, Russell Wilson, Mike Evans, three big storylines from today, all in one video here on the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.